All right, so we have 5.1 notes, day two, example one, one plus sine of x over cosine of x plus cosine of x over one plus sine of x. Right, so one of the things we can consider doing at first is creating, um, putting everything, rewriting everything in terms of sine and cosine. But if you look at both fractions, they're already broken into sine and cosine. So um, another thing we can consider here because there's not much we can cancel out, um, we can't cancel out top or bottom or diagonal because there's an addition between two fractions. So maybe combining the fractions by creating a common denominator. Um, right now our denominators are cosine of x and one plus sine of x. Uh, easiest way to come up with a common denominator would be to just multiply them together. So our new denominator will be cosine of x times the quantity one plus sine of x. The first fraction already had cosine of x in the denominator, so all we need to do is multiply the top by 1 plus sine of x. <clears throat> all right, for the second one, um, the denominator already had 1 plus sine of x, so we just need to multiply top and bottom by cosine of x. So cosine of x times cosine of x will give us cosine squared of x. And then what we're going to want to do here for the first fraction is FOIL. So first, 1 times 1 will give us 1. 1 plus sine of x will give us sine of x. One times sine of x will give us sine of x. And then sine of x times sine of x will give us positive sine squared of x. Plus the cosine squared of x that we already had. We'll add the fractions uh, in one step. So the new denominator is cosine of x times the quantity 1 plus sine of x. <clears throat> All right, next thing we'll do here is combine like terms. So sine of x plus sine of x will give us 2 sine of x plus the one we already had. And then sine squared plus cosine squared is a Pythagorean identity, which is equal to 1. So all that will be replaced by 1. And still over cosine of x times the quantity 1 plus sine of x. We will combine like terms again. So we have 1 and 1 will give us 2 plus 2 sine of x all over cosine of x times the quantity 1 plus sine of x. Okay, now, uh, the numerator sort of looks like the denominator. So, what we can do here. Is factor something from the top. Well, what do these two have in common? It is a two we can factor out. So we'll be left with one plus one sine of x, which is just going to be sine of x. And that was over cosine of x times the quantity one plus sine of x. So you'll see now there's something we can cancel in the numerator and denominator, that quantity. So we'll be left with 2 over cosine of x, which, if it's a little simpler for you to see, is the same thing as 2 over 1 times 1 over cosine of x. That stays as a 2, and then 1 over cosine of x is the same as secant of x. So final answer will be 2 secant of x. Moving on to example 2, we have secant of x over cosine of x minus tan of x over cotangent of x. Okay. Um, there are some values that are not broken down to sine and cosine, so we could try that out first. So secant of x is the same thing as 1 over cosine of x. Then in the denominator, cosine of x will just stay as cosine of x. We'll put it over 1 minus Tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. Our denominator cotangent will be cosine of x over sine of x. <clears throat> okay, so we'll work with the top fraction first. Uh, or the fraction to the left. We have 1 over cosine of x. Keep the top fraction the same, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So that'll be 1 over cosine of x. So that was all of this. Now 
working with this one, minus, keep the numerator fraction the same. So we have sine of x over cosine of x times the reciprocal of the denominator. So that would be sine of x over cosine of x. And we'll start multiplying them throughout. So one times one will give us one, cosine times cosine will give us cosine squared of x minus sine of x times sine of x is sine squared of x. And the denominator will be cosine squared of x. Okay. And then we can go ahead. There's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll just combine the fractions. So uh, we can subtract them because the denominators are, are the same. So we have one minus sine squared of x all over cosine squared of x. If you remember your Pythagorean families, one of them is sine squared plus cosine squared of x. If you subtract sine squared from both sides, you end up with this being equivalent to cosine squared of x all over cosine squared of x, which is really just one as your final answer. Okay, moving on to example three, we have cotangent of x times cosecant of x all over cosecant squared of x. I'm going to try breaking up everything into uh, terms of sine and cosine. So cotangent on top is going to give us cosine of x over sine of x times cosecant, which is the same thing as 1 over sine of x all over cosecant squared of x, which is just going to be 1 over sine squared of x. Okay. Um, on the top, the number, we're going to just going to go ahead and multiply straight across. So we have cosine of x over sine squared of x. And that's all over 1 over sine squared of x. And we're going to go ahead and evaluate the fraction by dividing. So we'll keep the numerator the same. Cosine of x over sine squared of x times the reciprocal of the denominator, which is sine squared of x over 1. Um, diagonally, we can cancel, and we're left with just cosine of x. And that will be our final answer. All right, moving on to example 4, we have secant squared of x times cosecant of x over secant squared of x plus cosecant squared of x. So what I'll do here is I'll break it in terms of sine and cosine. So in the numerator, secant squared x will be 1 over cosine squared of x times cosecant, which will be 1 over sine of x all over secant squared, which again will be 1 over cosine squared of x plus cosecant squared x, which is the same thing as 1 over sine squared of x. All right, I'll go ahead and carry out the multiplication on the numerator, which will give us 1 over cosine squared of x sine of x. And then the denominator, we could combine the fractions by finding a common denominator. So common denominator will be cosine squared x sine squared x. Keep in mind, <clears throat> the first fraction already had cosine, so we just need to multiply the top by sine squared of x. The second fraction already had sine squared, so we just need to multiply it by cosine squared of x. All right, on the top, I'm not going to do anything yet to the numerator. We're just going to leave it as 1 cosine squared of x sine of x. In the denominator, we know this right here to be a Pythagorean identity, which is equal to 1. And that will be over cosine squared x sine squared x. Now we're actually going to go ahead and, and divide. So we'll keep the numerator fraction the same. So we'll multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Put cosine squared x sine x squared all over 1. And some things will cancel out here. So cosine squared of x will cancel out. Uh, that sine x will cancel out. One of those will cancel out for a final answer of sine of x.